Hello everyone, so today we will be discussing about endometriosis and adenomyosis. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, quite often questions come from, uh, one question come from this topic in FMG. So let's start it, it's a very easy topic. Before starting it, I would like to tell you, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Well, and uh, it will help me a lot in my teaching journey. Do, please do it. Okay, so let's start this topic now. What is endometriosis? Endometriosis is uh, endometrio endometrium, it goes at the ectopic site other than the uterus, and when it goes, it is known as the uh, endometriosis. What is endometriosis? Uh, endometrium uh, it's not that from the uterus it goes uh, some endometrium is more also present at ectopic site. Mm. And uh, the Samson gives uh, the theory, which is also known as Samson theory, that there is a retrograde menstrual flow. Usually the menstrual flow comes out of the cervix. But what will happen if this menstrual flow goes from the uterus to the fallopian tube into the peritoneal cavity, then it is known as retrograde menstrual flow. So Samson said that during the retrograde menstrual flow, this endometrium, it implants at the ectopic site and and it uh, endometriosis usually happen in the female who have high estrogenic tendencies okay the most common site of the endometriosis is ovary because uh, when the retrograde menstrual flow occurs the most common site where the endometrium will implant just outside the fallopian tube is the ovary and the second most common site is the pouch of douglas if it doesn't implant on the OB, then it do implant on the pouch of Douglas. Okay. So, uh, endometrium at any topic site other than the uterus is known as endometriosis. Most common site is, of course, uh, the ovary. What is the pathology? As you all know that... As you all know that normal endometrium also it undergoes changes is uh, every month it uh, uh, undergoes under the hormones estrogen and progesterone it undergoes proliferation secretion and then shedding in same way this ectopic endometrium also undergoes these changing and normally the shedding occur, uh, the shedding of the endometrium uh, from the uterus it comes out out of the vagina but here it cannot come out when this ectopic site is ovary then this uh, endometrial sheddings they form the chocolate cyst and when uh, the endometrium is implanted in the peritoneal cavity like in the pouch of douglas then this uh, then this shedding they form blue spots powder burn spots gunshot spots or adhesions okay so this is what is the pathology of the endometrium I will tell you a little bit about it like our normal endometrium every month in the hormones influence there is proliferation secretion and then it will shed the vagina through the vagina it is the same way ectopic endometrial sites also proliferate secrete and shed now it is not coming out of the vagina क्योंकि अगर ये ओवरी में है तो ये शेडिंग्स जो है वो चॉकलेट सिस्ट बना लेती है और अगर ये जो है पाउच ऑफ डगलस में है तो ये पूरी पेरिटोनियल कैविटी में ब्लू ब्लू कलर के स्पॉट्स बना लेती हैं जब वो पुराने हो जाते हैं तो पाउडर बन स्पॉट्स हो जाते हैं और फिर धीरे धीरे जो है एडहेशंस बन जाते हैं ठीक है तो लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड देन व्हाट आर द सिम्टम्स ऑफ द पेशेंट ऑफ द of the uh, endometriosis now as you know that in the uh, patient of endometriosis there are a lot of adhesions and lot of ectopic sites of endometrium these ectopic site of endometrium and adhesions they give a chronic pelvic pain and it also give a secondary dysmenorrhea dddd hota hai sab dysmenorrhea dysperiunia dysfertility and yes there is increased menorrhagia why there is chronic pain chronic pelvic pain and secondary dysmenorrhea because when those ectopic site they undergoes proliferation and secretion they irritate the peritoneum and they cause pelvic pain and when uh, during the menstrual menstruation phase uh, there is 
there is shedding of the endometrium into the peritoneal cavity or in the ovary which causes secondary dysmenorrhea there is dyspareunia because the second most common site of the second most common site of the uh, of the uh, endometrium is pouch of Douglas which causes a lot of adhesions and lot of uh, pain uh, in the uh, pain in the pelvis and when when a couple intercourse then uh, there is a lot of uh, pressure on the pouch of Douglas which causes dyspareunia. Infertility is there because the ovarian uh, chocolate cyst or the endometrioma it causes anovulation and those adhesion they cause the distorted anatomy so that is why um, even if ovulation is occur the fimbria cannot uh, pick the egg due to the distorted anatomy and moreover there is uh, decreased implantation decreased chances of implantation because of the very poor atmosphere a lot of uh, uh, inflammatory cytokines are there in the uterus which causes decreased implantation then there is manorrhagia uh, in the patients of endometriosis because there is increased estro estrogen increased estrogen causes increased endometrial proliferation so uh, there is manorrhagia so once again i would like to tell you all the symptoms are starting with D dysmenorrhea, secondary dysmenorrhea, in dyspareunia, infertility, and uh, man, uh, in the case of the manorrhagia, there is increase, uh, there is manorrhagia because there is increased estrogen tendency in this patient. The investigation is laparoscopy because we cannot see adhesions by ultrasound or MRI. We have to do laparoscopy and see with those adhesions with the scope, those powder burnt pieces. Yes, chocolate cysts can be seen on the ultrasound. On ultrasound, uh, in the case of the chocolate cyst, there is the ground glass appearance. Okay. Question had come uh, last year in the FM, last time in the FMG that uh, this is the ground glass appearance was given on the ultrasound and oh, what is the treatment of it that we will discuss in a short while okay yes so treatment of uh, usually uh, as this uh, as this uh, uh, endometriosis it occurs in 25 to 35 years of age uh, usually it occurs in 25 to 35 years of age uh, usually this uh, usually uh, the treatment it occurs in 20 uh, usually this endometriosis occurs in 25 to 35 years of age so we cannot opt for hysterectomy and those ectopic sites uh, endometrial removal okay so as um, as this endometriosis occurs in a very young age, we cannot opt for hysterectomy along with the ectopic endometrial sites removal. Okay, we have to stop the endometrium to not to bleed so that all those adhesions and all those um, all those uh, uh, all those adhesions and all those. Um, uh, so that all those adhesions and all those powder burn spores they don't get active so we have to stop the endometrium to bleed because uh, if we only remove the ectopic endometrium uh, and don't do the hysterectomy then again the endometrium will come and implant in the implant in the baritoneal cavity so only the treatment of it is don't let the endometrium to bleed so whenever we will not let the endometrium to bleed it, then the uterus endometrium will not uh, uh, bleed too so the medical treatment is NSAIDs uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs tranexamic acid is the first choice then combined oral contraceptive and long acting progesterone that is how, how I always tell you all these estrogenic conditions they are treated by all the same drugs first of all NSAIDs that is a drug of choice combined oral contraceptive is on the second number because they do decrease the bleeding long acting progesterone is on the third number then number four and number 
फाइव आर द एंटी प्रोजेस्टिरोन एंड एंटी ईस्ट्रोजन ड्रग दैर इज मीफीप्रेस्टोन एंड गेस्ट्रीन नोन ओके यूलीप्रेस्टाल इज नॉट गिवन हेयर बिकॉज इट इज एस पी आर एम सिलेक्टिव प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन रिसेप्टर मॉड्यूलेटर एंड नंबर फाइव सिक्स एंड सेवन इज ऑल द एंटी गोनाइडोट्रॉप इन रिलीजिंग हारमोन ड्रग्स दैट इज जी एन आर एच एनालॉग्स जी एन आर एच एंटागनिस्ट एंड डेनाजोल ओके सो दैट वॉज ऑल अबाउट द ट्रीटमेंट all this drug it does not let the endometrium to proliferate what is the surgical management surgical management is as i already told you that we cannot do the hysterectomy so we only can do adhesiolysis fulguration of the lesion and cystectomy of the chocolate cyst so the answer to the question which come was cystectomy in the if the patient is infertile then we have to give ovulation drug plus we have to do the iui and if it is a severe form then we have to do the surgical removal of those adhesions followed by ivf okay so that was that is about the treatment of the uh, that is about the treatment of the uh, treatment of the endometriosis and next is about the treatment of adenomyosis next is our topic adenomyosis here the endometrium is not outside the uterus but here the endometrium gets implanted in the deep myometrium okay so now usually this happens um, whenever a whenever a delivery is there okay so whenever a delivery is there with every delivery the endometrium and myometrium junction it breaks there is a sub endometrial halo or which is you can see more than 12 mm on ultrasound okay so whenever the junction of the endometrium and myometrium breaks so there is the halo a khali space on the uh, below the endometrium and if it is more than 12 mm on ultrasound it confirms adenomyosis now this adenomyosis it lead to the formation of lakes and channels in the myometrium so from this myometrium uh, lakes or channels in the myometrium the endometrium bleed okay so there is a formation of lakes and channels so, so you can see that this endometrium go and implant in the myometrium with every delivery okay and then it leads to a subendometrial halo and uh, then a lakes are formed through which lakes this endometrium bleeds every month okay now next is the uh, there uh, next is the uh, how what is the uh, what are the features of it now here i would like to tell you there is uniform enlargement of the uterus because the endometrium uh, is going deep into the myometrium so there is uniform enlargement of the uterus but this enlargement is never more than 14 week that you have to learn the symptoms of on the pv also similarly we see that the uterus is uniformly enlarged in the fibroid we all have uh, read it that there is a irregular nodular enlargement of the uterus whereas in the adenomyosis there is uniformly enlarged uterus the symptoms are menorrhagia and progressive dysmenorrhea which are also the symptoms of fibroid so if on the pv the uterus is uniformly enlarged it is adenomyosis and if on the pv it is irregularly enlarged then it is fibroid okay on investigation on on ultrasound we have got the salt paper or the dash dot appearance but mri is the best investigation treatment of it is hysterectomy as usually the patient of the adenomyosis is is uh, as usually the patient of the adenomyosis is multi paras that's all about uh, the adenomyosis and endometriosis see you soon in the next video please like share and subscribe my channel it will help me a lot in my teaching journey thank you